Uh, our next speaker is uh, Mr. Uh, Tayyab Ali. So he is a uh, Microsoft MVP uh, from Bangladesh and he's a uh, accomplished uh, uh, technical leader with a proven success record in uh, having a during 14 years experience in Microsoft and data platform and MongoDB. Uh, and currently he is working on uh, GMO LCC as a data solution manager and uh, mostly focused on migration, automation and improving uh, projects. And he is also a uh, organizer for uh, Dhaka means community meetups and uh, he has spoken, spoken in a lot of conferences and uh, yeah, tech conferences. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Asif. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen and. Yeah. If someone can confirm that uh, you can see my screen. Uh, yeah. We can view it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, you can continue, please. OK, great, great. Thank you. I'm actually joining from from East Coast. Uh, you know, I was uh, born and raised in Bangladesh and then uh, I've been living um, in uh, in East Coast in USA for uh, about 17 years right now, but Singapore is a you know uh, is an exceptional place for me because when I was 19, that was the first country I visited uh, outside Bangladesh. I and I uh, I was there many many times because before I uh, came to work into data platform, uh, I actually used to drive uh, ships in merchant marine. So I, as you know, Singapore is a big hub for merchant fleet. So I used to stop there a lot. So I was there even like three years ago to see uh, some of my friends from old days. So uh, it, it's nice and thank you so much uh, to the organizers, you know, for, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm also very much connected with the Dhaka group with Hassan um, and Mehdi, who is also a speaker today. Uh, uh, so it's, it's nice, uh, you know, that I can uh, also, you know, participate with you folks uh, from this far. Uh, and those of you joined, you know, you know, listening to me also, thank you, because, you know, it's not easy uh, on a Saturday to give up your time uh, and, you know, listening to someone that that uh, speaks highly about you. If you are participating and listening to these talks, that means, uh, you know, you are um, trying to advance your career. So I, I uh, you know, I appreciate that. So what we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about uh, business continuity during the disaster and uh, uh, totally focused on Azure SQL database um, uh, because, you know, it's, it's a vast subject. There's many options, so the time doesn't allow us to uh, talk about other resources. Even within the uh, Azure SQL now, um, there is managed instance, there is hyperscale, and I'm not going to talk about those today. There's Azure SQL, you can run on Azure VM. Um, so there is SQL you can run on Azure VM, so I'll totally focus on Azure SQL. Uh, so let's let's move on. I'm not going to read my uh, slide. What's on the right side? Uh, if you want to take a note on the left side about my contacts, and uh, if you want to reach out to me after this talk uh, for anything uh, related to what I'm talking about, or in general anything about data platform, please reach out. Uh, I monitor all these four. And I'll make sure that you know I uh, give you a answer back within uh, uh, you know within two days. And uh, if you're a local leader, uh, I know there's many local leaders from other countries, from Sri Lanka, Philippines, um, and and, uh, and you know Nepal. Um, if you folks you know uh, looking for a speaker, uh, I have a couple of talks. If it's useful to your groups, then only let me know. Otherwise, you know I don't want to just speak for the sake of speaking. So. <laughs> This is a real event uh, that actually happened in 2019 uh, in one of the Azure region uh, in the UK South. And uh, if you see this slide, there was 16 hour, 11 minute outage. And so the question you need to ask, um, you know, as you're moving to cloud, putting your resources there, you know, things are going to go wrong. Things are going to happen. Uh, do not assume that, you know, as you're moving to cloud, yes, Microsoft has redundancy. Yes, they have, you know, they replicate your stuff in many other places. Still, things will happen, so you need to prepare for that. Um, and one thing I always try to, you know, emphasize, and I also try to practice, when people come to me, you know, as a, database solutions manager or you know just leading the team ask me about you know what kind of um, 
solutions you should put for for disaster. I actually don't want to give them a solution directly, right? I and I till this day, I feel like that's not our job. Um, we should not be stepping into that place. What our job is to give them the options, tell them the pros and cons, uh, educate them about you know RTO, RPO, ERT. We'll talk about some of this and the cost you know involved with this, right? Uh, the less the time for RPO, RTO, you need to spend more money and so if you are the person you know from the business side whoever is the person making the choice who can sign the check he or she needs to tell us you know okay you gave me four solution can we do two of this or can we do this can we not do this so my goal is to talk about those options um, and um, you know whatever time permits we'll do some demo uh, if we do not get to the end due to time constraint, this slide deck and all the code that I'm going to show you is uh, I just refreshed my repo just about three hours ago. So it's all in my um, GitHub repo. Uh, if you search for SQL worldwide, if you go to GitHub, you'll see my repo and you can download, use it, share it, you know, do whatever you need to. You do not need any permission or anything. So these are two common terms. Uh, if you have been working in technology for a while, uh, you should know this too. If you do not know, if you are new to this, um, also you should look it up. So, you know, RTO, RPO, uh, one is saying how far, uh, er, from what point I can recover my data in case of a disaster. Other one is talking about how much time I need to be fully functional. Now, there's a new term that's floating around, especially after, you know, inception of cloud estimated recovery time and this is nothing but is the max of uh, uh, you know ERT is a similar is the same as RTO uh, because your recovery time will vary you know based on the incidents right uh, but you want to know you know what's your max that you can sustain based on your business there have been you know some research has been done uh, especially with all this, you know, um, uh, the cyber attacks goes on uh, nowadays with the ransomware and all that. Um, it says if you cannot recover 100% within five days, there is huge chance, and I don't, I forget about the exact percentage, you will be out of the business at some point. So this is a diagram just to conceptually to see that what I'm talking about, what is RPO, RTO. I'm not going to read this slide, but I color coded this. Uh, so when you download, it's easier for you to understand. So that blue line is RPO and the other two is a combination of RTO. And you know, if you read blog posts, be careful what you read because people might have uh, you know, different views. Um, uh, so try to really you know, get this in your head. What does this mean? And is your business counterpart uh, in agreement with that? And uh, you know, the solutions that you are putting in, uh, are those going to be abide by this time that you are, you know, agreeing with, uh, with, um, you know, with the business owners? Before we talk about Azure SQL Database, uh, you know, I'm going to show you a couple of features and different options for um, um, to recover. Um, and to understand those, you know, when I'm going to use those terms, uh, you might get lost if you're not used to. It. So I put this slide. It's kind of a hierarchy, but I put it sideways for a reason just too easier to understand. So on the left side you see DTU, DTU and vCore and I'll talk about this a little bit if you're new to this. This is a purchase model. The next basic standard premier general purpose. Those are service tier and then you have your compute tier. So on vCore uh, for DTU there is nothing else. You select your DTU, you go to basic standard premium and I'm not going to go into details of those in the interest of time, but if you choose vCore, then you next you go to service tier. There is three. Then you go to your compute tier because you can have provision means you have fixed amount of CPU and memory always assigned to you, or you can go serverless um, that you know on the fly based on your workload uh, you will grab more CPU and more memory. And then at that fourth tier, what is called uh, is a hardware type. So you have options for 
different hardware type uh, that you can choose. So some of the features that I'll talk about when I say no, this is not available on this, this is not available on that. If you get lost, uh, come back do, to this slide. And uh, at the end, I have a resource slide where I have more details that you can go and read about. So I talked about like D2 and vCore and um, you know Microsoft really highly recommend you should go to vCore, uh, but initially when Azure SQL database was launched, it was launched with D2 model. So the D2 model is a, uh, as you can see, I, you know, I, from the diagram, but I'm not going to read those, uh, but basically it's a abstract of your compute storage and IO together. It's called uh, database transaction unit. But when you go to vCore, you can clearly see um, you know how many CPUs you are assigning, uh, what kind of storage you are uh, getting, and um, you know and I/O, and also there is a, a ratio. Uh, you know you cannot really choose memory directly still, like as you can do it on prem servers. When you rack your servers, you can see you know you want this much of RAM. You still cannot do that, but Microsoft has clear documentation that how much RAM you get uh, for how you know uh, the number of CPUs that you assign to Azure SQL database. So these are some of the options that we have uh, in case of a disaster recovery, and, and I'm not going to talk about every one of those, uh, but temporal table, uh, if you're working with SQL Server, uh, it came out in SQL Server 2016 on-prem. Uh, at the same time, it came also in cloud. Um, so it basically enables you to restore row versions from any point in time, uh, you know, based on your retention. Uh, so, and I'm not going to talk about this because this is a similar concept uh, as an on-prem and really not a disaster recovery solution, but you can take advantage. Mention, um, you know, to, to some extent you can take advantage. Uh, automated backup, we'll talk about a little bit. Built-in um, HADR. So once you spin up a Azure SQL database without doing anything, you automatically get some kind of uh, redundancy. And I'll talk about those based on the tiers and then zone redundancy. So with some of the tiers, um, so like I really don't know exact zone name in Singapore, so you know, pardon me, or their area. Like in East Coast, uh, we have East US 2 and East US. So within East US 2 is a bigger region for Azure because there's a lot of business on the East Coast. Uh, they have multiple data center. So uh, within the zone, if you want to get your data center redundancy, what you can uh, do, you can turn this on for certain tier without paying any extra money. So what Microsoft will make sure that your cooling and your power um, and, and you know your hardware, they are separated into different data center. Um, so in that case, if within a bigger zone, if a data center goes down, you still you know you will be running um, uh, without any interruption. Uh, active geo replication, I can say similar to on premise. If you have two different data center, let's say like one in Singapore, one in Philippines. Um, and you are doing, um, you know, always an availability group, probably a synchronous replication, or even like in case of log shipping, uh, similar concept in active geo replication. And auto failover group came up, came out after active geo replication. It's built on active geo replication, but if you just implement active geo replication, you can only fail over per database. But if you have a set of database that supports a single application, uh, you can group those like if you are using this on premise, always an availability group. It's exactly the same feature as we call availability groups. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about temporal table anymore, uh, but uh, we'll touch other ones. Uh, this is a exact copy paste from the URL that I, you see at the bottom of this slide. Uh, this is something you want to know because when you are negotiating with the business owners and when I say negotiate means you're discussing and giving them options. This is you want to tell them, hey, if you choose this, uh, you know, like if you just rely on backup, understand that you can lose one hour of data. Is that OK for you? Can you sustain it? Can you recover it? Because uh, there are applications, right? Um, like, you know, uh, some of you, you know earlier you saw like, you know, we're showing, um, you know, some of those uh, um, you know, like machine learning and stuff. Uh, so like, you know, if you're just buying data from a third party sitting in a flat file and, you know, if you're processing those and then staging those, even if you lose an hour, you can probably reprocess and, and get it back as long as your flat files are uh, are available, right? So if you have that kind of stuff, yes. Uh, say I can sustain it, so I'm not just going to set up backup and I'm not going to do anything else. You cannot do that, okay? Then you, you have other options. So you're going to show this, you know, um, talk about these time frames and then negotiate with them 
come up with a solution, right? Whatever you want. So, you know, give you an example of what I was talking about before. You set up Active Geo replication. Now you have two, you have same hardware in two different zones, right? You're paying it twice for your compute, uh, for its storage and everything, right? So that you have to pay more money, but you can bring your RPR to your down. So let's talk about uh, automated backup. Um, I put this as a caution that you lose control of precise RPO. And the reason I say that uh, on-prem, when you schedule a backup, right, I can schedule it up to a second. I can say at this hour, minute, second, I want a transaction log backup. In cloud, you really cannot do that. You do not have a control. Microsoft has a range of time um, that, uh, you know, how within what time frame is going to take a backup, but uh, it's not that precise like on-prem. So, and, you know, if you go to the documentation, you know, it clearly says that generally, right? Uh, transaction log backups are generally created every five to 10 minutes. So uh, that's why I said, you know, you lose the precise control. So just keep that in your mind. Uh, full backup, weekly differential every 12 to 24 hours, transaction log five to 10 minutes. Again, I want to make sure that it's not precise time. Uh, next one uh, is called point in time backup. Uh, and you do not have to do anything. Uh, these are automatically, as soon as you deploy, based on your tier, um, it will automatically start. Uh, point in time backups, by default, you get seven days. You can scale up to 35 days. You have to pay a little bit more, uh, except for basic tier. So on a basic, you cannot go more than seven days. With any other tier, you can go up to 35 days. Uh, long-term retention. So now some people might say 35 days, like I work for a financial industry, uh, 35 days is not going to cut it. Uh, if the Security Exchange Commission come for an audit, they want to see some old stuff, um, you know, we need to have it. I used to work for a uh, dialysis company, uh, huge uh, in USA for four years. Uh, uh, we cannot just say that, you know, we only have 35 days of backup. So. Azure, you can keep it for up to 10 years, but then your granularity um, changes. And uh, you, what I mean by that, sorry, one point before I go there, uh, your backups are automatically uh, get copied to another uh, geographically redundant uh, area. So it will go to a different zone, automatically get copied behind the scene. You do not have to do anything. Uh, so when I say long-term retention backup, right? Uh, so. It's a either weekly, monthly, or yearly. Uh, so on the first one, as you see, uh, if I set it up for week of year is three and Y equals five means for five year. What I'm saying is keep the third full backup um, of each week for five year, right? For each third week, uh, the third week's backup, keep it for five year. So I put some more examples to you know, to see, uh, you know, the different ways you can do it. So take an example of the last one. Mm. Here I'm saying keep all weekly backups for six weeks. If it's the 16th week, keep it for 10 years. Every monthly backup, keep it for a year. So you can have all kind of, uh, you know, setup that you want. So the question is, okay, we take the backups. What do you do with those? We can restore. A, as a new database on the same logical server, but you definitely have to have a separate name, right? It's similar as on-prem. You cannot have two databases with the same name. Uh, and I can have that server in a different region uh, and I can uh, you know, uh, restore there. Uh, you can do it on the same server from the server that you took the backup, right? Just with a different name. And as I said, you can do it in any region to recover. Uh, one thing, you cannot override existing database. Makes sense because it's the same name. If you delete the logical SQL server, because in cloud the server itself is just a logical concept, uh, you know, just to as a container, um, not the container that in my previous speaker was showing. I'm just talking about like as as a as a logical uh, way. Uh, you cannot. If you delete the SQL server, you cannot recover a database. But if your logical server exists and you delete a database, 
you can recover it. Just keep that in mind. Uh, this is a slide I'm not going to go or uh, spend time, but a lot of time I get asked this question. Can we restore these backups to on premise? Uh, so there are some ways uh, you can do it. Um, uh, not directly, but you know. Uh, uh, so just look it up. There are a few ways that I listed here. Uh, most of this, if you search, uh, you know, there are extensive documentation or other people uh, blogged about it, wrote about it. So now what do you get? I said, you know, you get built in um, high uh, HADR solutions. So uh, what do you get? What do I mean by that? So if you look at a picture, this is if you're in a basic standard or general purpose. Um, if you look at the picture on the on the right side, so what happens is you automatically get, um, you know, one of your uh, you know, VM, this is the one live working. And then you have a bunch of those there standby here on the right, right? As you can see. And you get connected with the storage at the bottom and your backups are there. And your data and log file are on a, on, on, on a local storage. I mean, um, you know, not, not attached. And you get your S is, you know, uh, attached SSD has your TEMDB. And so if this VM goes down, they will automatically find wherever there's additional capacity, spin up another VM with SQL Server, and then attach your locally redundant storage, right? That's how they'll bring you up quickly. And this is within the same region though. Uh, and you do not have to do anything for this. And this is a similar concept. If any of you used a failover cluster instance uh, on premise, pretty much similar, right? You have two, three, four nodes, uh, but you have one copy of this storage. And if you fail over, uh, it get detached and get attached to the other host. If you're into premium or business critical, this is pretty much works similar as uh, always an availability group on prem, right? Uh, so your storage also get copied. Uh, every VM uh, has its own data and log files, and of course TEMDB. So you get four replicas, and you also get a, a scale out for read only uh, without paying any extra money. So on your connection string, if you say this is you know uh, for read only, uh, your application intent it will automatically send it uh, to one of those four. Um, it always makes sure before the acknowledgement go to back, goes back to the caller that your, one of the secondaries are in sync. Uh, that is guaranteed. I talked about zone redundancy, so this is kind of a picture that within a region I can have zone one, zone two, zone three. Um, it's again independent power, cooling network, um, for you know for each one. Uh, how do they do this? Uh, again, uh, a picture here for general purpose. Uh, this is still in public preview. Uh, it's not GA and um, you have to uh, pay for it. Um, if you go to the portal and try to turn it on, it will give you a warning and it uh, has a URL. It will take you to the page. Uh, you can check how much uh, money this is going to cost you. Um, and I have a note also here. It's only available with the Gen 5 compute hardware. But if you're into premium and business critical, uh, you do not need to pay anything. But again, it's not turned on by default. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not turned on by default. There is a reason. Uh, if you turn it on. That you want this zone redundancy. Probably your nodes are going to be a little bit apart, right? Because they cannot be in the same data center. Um, now, they are kept in sync with synchronous replication. So what does that mean? If they, you know, say like I was talking about East US 2 is a big zone, have a lot of data center. Now they're geographically a little bit apart, you know, and I really don't know how many miles is the max. Now, if all these nodes, all four has to be synchronously replicated, 
if you make a call and before you get the acknowledgement, all these replicas has to be in sync. They are within the zone, right? So now you might get a delay to get your acknowledgement back. That's why Microsoft doesn't turn this on by default. Uh, you have to turn it on. Uh, there is no extra cost if you're in premium and business critical. Uh, is there any any question at this point? Uh, I don't know if chat is on or off. I'm really not sure. When I checked last time, it was off. So, um, you know, I've yeah. been talking about for about 20 minutes. So I just want to make sure uh, people do not have any question or any 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 uh, comment. Yeah, as of now, there's no. Uh, but uh, yeah, hey guys, if you have anything, so please uh, ra use the raise hand feature so we can unmute you. You can ask yours. Thank you, Asif. So I'm going to continue. Um, uh, you know, before we go to demo, I can check one more time. So active geo replication. Um, again, uh, it's a you know similar code base as you know it's probably same code base as always an availability group, uh, same technology. Uh, but here the replication is asynchronous. Uh, you can have up to have you know four secondaries, and also you can use the secondaries for read only traffic. Uh, if for any reason you want to make sure that your transaction get hardened in the secondary before the caller get the acknowledgement, right? Um, there is a way to do that. Uh, so sorry, before I go there, uh, I have a note here, as you can see at the bottom on the right side, it's available in all service tier uh, other than hyperscale. Uh, I try to make it clear in every slide, uh, so you know, so you don't have to go and read the documentation for everything. Uh, uh, you can use this. Uh, uh, SP word for database copy sync. What this will do, um, it will make sure that your transaction got replicated to the secondary, uh, but it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't work for the replay. So at least it get copies and eventually it will get replayed. So that way you are guaranteed that your transaction will make it to, you know, to the, to the secondaries. Now, as I said before, what happened is when Microsoft came out with this, um, this was single database, right? So if you have to fail over a bunch of database that supports one application, um, you really do not have a time frame that I can say, okay, I failed over, you know, up to this point, right? Because now you're doing it every database separate. Um, and that was a problem. Because even if you move to cloud, you know, I can have a bunch of, you know, three, four databases that supporting a single application. Um, so then they came, um, you know, uh, deployed this feature, auto failover groups. And uh, again, so it's available in all service tier, um, again, other than hyperscale. Um, I just want to make that clear again. Um, Again, here you can use the secondaries for read-only traffic. Actually, you automatically get two URL, uh, two connection strings, and I'll show those, uh, one for uh, read-write and one for read-only. And if you fail over fail back, um, you do not have to do anything on your application side. Uh, it will automatically route it to the, to the correct place. Uh, Uh, you get something like this failover group name dot database dot windows dot net and you get another one for for read only listener endpoint. Now um, I want to just highlight one thing. Um, the failover for the read only listener is actually disabled. Uh, so just so you know, because now our goal is to fail over the read write to the to the read only, but you know most likely it will fail over because there's something some problem with the existing read write so it doesn't make sense to fail over the the read only to the read write right because otherwise it wouldn't fail over at the first place so i just want to highlight that point uh, this is again i'm not going to read about this uh, it's pretty much you know just a summary uh, that you know what you can do with just your application and uh, what do you get when you turn over auto failover groups uh, so you need to decide, right? Uh, also, you need to talk to the 
um, you know, your lead developers, your architects, make sure they understand, you know, that what they have to do on their side to make this as seamless as possible. Uh, this is, you know, again copied from books online. Uh, if you need to check, uh, what's the status of my replication, right? How far behind I am, uh, you know, where I am, how much is the lag? Uh, you can use this. So it's good that okay. So I'm at 24 minute. Um, so I'm at a demo place right now. I'm going to go to demo. Uh, before I go there, I just want to. Um, uh, you know, talk about feedback. I know I still have slides to do, uh, sorry, demos to do, uh, but if you want to take a note of that, uh, you know, that bit.ly uh, or take a picture uh, in case, if, you know, um, if you have to leave value or anything, uh, because I think this is important for me, uh, also important for the organizers, right? As they said, you know, they're, do they're doing this, uh, you know, um, coordinating with multiple countries, group leaders, different interests. I'm sure they want to, they want to see, you know, how, uh, you guys are taking it, you know what they can do next time to, you know, to do this better. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, you know, skip my slide for a minute uh, and go to demo. So. I'm just going to do a little bit of setting here. Uh, let me know if you lose uh, my screen. Or if you don't see it, so I'm showing my Azure Data Studio. Uh, I think you can see it. Yeah, I can see my red line. So uh, those of you uh, who are not familiar with Azure Data Studio, uh, this is a multi-platform tool. Uh, Microsoft is, uh, you know, heavily promoting this. And uh, actually, if you didn't know, if you, uh, got the latest version of management studio uh, uh, which is 18.7.1 i believe you actually automatically got azure data studio uh, installed in your machine i uh, just so you know uh, and i'm using a notebook uh, if you don't know what the notebook is uh, you know don't get hung up uh, thinking about that uh, it's just a place where i can write comments uh, you know i can use uh, some markup language and I can also have my code and I can have different kernel, right? So I can have PowerShell, uh, Python, uh, T-SQL, uh, KQL and different kind of kernel. That way, you know, uh, once you download this from my GitHub, you have everything in one place. Uh, and also what I did before uh, all of you came online, I ran some of this to set up uh, because it takes time, so I I'm not going to. I'm just going to get the variables again. Uh, I ran all this. I have enough comment. You should be able to run this as, um, you know, if you have an account or open a free account. And I'm going to start here. So the demo starts here. But you might be wondering that what I did with that code, right? So I'm going to just going to show you. Uh, these are some of the resources uh, that I created. Uh, pretty much three different SQL Server. One is our primary, one is our secondary, and I also want to show you the, the read scale. And for that, I need a different tier. And there are a couple of databases that I put in here. That's all I created so far. And uh, these are, uh, you know, from a demo database, Adventures Works LT, um, and the content doesn't matter. Um, if you are new to Azure, you know, uh, probably know because I saw, you know, some of the most of the talks assume that you are already, you know, very much into Azure. Uh, I always suggest you create a resource group. You do this like at the end of this session. I'll just go and create, delete the resource group. That way I don't have to worry about deleting every resource individually, right? Uh, so let's talk about backup. So I said, you know, uh, you automatically get some, uh, you know, um, a point in time backup, right? So if you go here, primary server, we go to manage backup, and you can do all this with PowerShell, and I have the code I'll show you. As you can see that it automatically set up point in time backup for seven days, right? And now I can go here. I can set configure retention and I can go up to 35 days, right? And as you can see, there is no long term right now. These are all empty. So what you can do and I, you know, I can do it from the GUI um, and you can do it too, but I'm going to just uh, do most of this stuff with the PowerShell. Um, so this is 
you know, to check what kind of long term retention I have set up uh, for a single database. As you can see, everything is zero, so there's nothing. Now I'm going to set this up. Uh, I'm not going to read these comments in the interest of time, but this is a PowerShell code. I'm doing it, you know, weekly 12 weeks, uh, 16th backup, 16th uh, weeks backup, keep it for five years, no monthly retention. And as if, if you if you see anyone raising their hand during demo, please, uh, you know, please uh, stop me. Uh, you know, I want to make sure I don't you know, I know time is essence, but again, I don't want to rush it sure, uh, sure. because I'm, I'm going to share everything so people can practice all this by themselves. I'd rather uh, answer questions if someone has anything, right? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, actually, I have one question here. Uh, oh, like, sure, uh, go ahead. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, it's like uh, it's showing from the portal. It's uh, 35 days, so if we have to configure manually, so we can do by PowerShell, right? Yes, yes. All of these are uh, through PowerShell. Like, like you see that we didn't have long term retention before. Just before when I was here, now it's here, right? Because I, I ran this code. Okay. So I'm sure there is a command. I, you know, I don't memorize commands. I'm sure there is one set as is SQL database point in time backup policy or something. Okay, sure. Thanks. And uh, in my setup uh, at the top, uh, you know, all the commands that I'll be using is actually from this module. Okay, is that module? Okay. Yeah, I already loaded it, but I put it there and I put it as a comment. If you know, if you have not already, right? So I have it, so I did not run it. So uh, all the commands are from that one module. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, to have, uh, this arrow here, I just want to yes. understand uh, that uh, after the session, can you just share the your GitHub uh, link so that uh, we can view it later on? Oh, I can I can uh, view it right now. Like I said, you know, I know, uh, you know, I don't want to go out of a script, but again, whatever uh, the users need, right? Uh, because all my demo code, you can run it by yourself. Um, so this is, you know, if you go to GitHub, search for SQL Worldwide Presentations. Uh, as you see, I just refreshed it two hours ago. And this is the slide deck and I'm using two notebooks. That's it. And uh, notebooks have pretty much every section is commented. Uh, I'm talking about what I'm doing and then I have the code. Sure, uh, that is a very beneficial for us and also for the attendees. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And you see here is my subscription ID. But when you download from GitHub, it will not have this ID. It will say put your subscription ID. So I didn't upload it as is. I want to make sure that, you know, so people don't get confused by mistake. They, you know, they keep running it and get an error message. Uh, so I changed this before, you know, I, I have a separate file for GitHub. So. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, Thank great. You. You're welcome. Uh, so, you know, so we, we set this up. And if you want to see it, you know, I went to the GUI to see the long term retention, but you know, someone might say, you know, I, I'm not a GUI person. I just want to see it from PowerShell. Uh, this is a command that will tell you what kind of long term retention you have. Uh, if you want to remove it, I'm not going to run it right now just to save time, but if you want to remove it, um, you know, this is the code that you can use. Now, I talked about that built in HADR, right? And I showed you that in the portal, uh, I did not do anything, right? I, I did not set up um, anything as of now. Um, they are just, I just created those. Now, what kind of HADR I have right now, right? Without anything. So um, again, uh, you know, I said, you know, start a workload using OSTRESS. Uh, and I, you know, this is pretty much a copy paste uh, or an idea that I, I took from here. I want to make sure that, you know, I mentioned those so people don't think that, you know, I. Um, you know, I wrote it from scratch, right? Um, and OSTRESS is a tool that uh, um, you, know, you might, some of you, I don't know your background, I'm sorry, you know, but uh, if you're like me, operational DBA, um, yeah, you know, we use this to generate loads on the server. Um, so, and you know, I'm not going to talk about all these switches and all that because um, it's just we don't have time right now. So, um, forget this shortcut for a minute. So what I'm saying here, uh, pretty much you're connecting to a cloud server. 
um, give a database name, just just doing a regular select count, right? Nothing, nothing fancy here. Um, it's going to ask me for my uh, password. I didn't want to hard code that because not that I'm going to you know, keep these resources, but I just thought I don't want to set up a bad precedence, uh, you know, putting password here. So now as you can see, it's doing a select, right? Uh, you know, just getting a count continuously. And now I'm going to do a failover. And this failover, just to so understand, it's not failing over to a different zone or not failing over to a different region. It's just within the, uh, you know, the same zone, the extra copies that I get. And it's doing a fail. So this one is going to take a little bit longer time because this is a uh, lower tier. You will notice that it's taking some time. So now it got disconnected, right? Uh, it my OS test is still running. It says the server is not there. I cannot connect to it. Just keep trying, and you'll see that within few seconds it will start giving us the result back as it's doing right now. So this is a built in solution that without doing anything. Uh, you get it. Uh, I put a note here. This is a general purpose tier. It took a little bit longer. I have the same setup. I'm not going to run it. This is for business critical tier. So this server, this database, as you saw in the portal that I created into a different tier for different demo, this one will be a lot faster. So I have the same code. I can bring it here, run it, and then I can do another failover a lot quicker. And I did this many times, same thing. So I'm, not, I'm just going to skip it, but I put the code here for you to test. Uh, you can do it in your own time. So active geo replication. Now uh, I'm going to set up between the two servers. Uh, one of the database, right? Again, remember, active geo replication has no concept of a set of database. It's part database. So I'm doing it for one of the databases within the between these two servers. So I'm going to run this command. Let's go to portal and just see what happened. And it says that still not configured, right? It is not, so that confused me a little bit. Maybe I don't know what I, let me go back. Okay, database already, ex okay, okay, I see. So I was testing today and I know what happened, so Sorry, I'm just going to go back there and just delete that database. So uh, I should have cleaned up. This is my fault. So I always prefer to, you know, run it one more time, you know, just before because as your change so quickly commands change and you know you never know so i never take this as a guarantee that uh, between the two demos is going to work as is so okay so this time this should work uh, let's close this let's go to portal OK, as you see here now. It says, um, you know. Seeding 0%, right? So from primary, um, it's in East US 2. It's sending a copy to Central US 2, uh, Central US. Uh, and I can choose any, anything I want, right? I just choose Central US. Uh, I have to have a server there. Uh, I do not have to have a database. I mean, you know, it's going to copy that database. Uh, the error we got because, you know, when I was testing before, I didn't clean it up. 
Um, I actually said do not. Uh, you know, I stopped that application, but I just didn't do a good cleanup, so uh, I should have done that. So that's done. Uh, it's not totally done. So once it's done, then uh, we're going to do a failover, right? Uh, we're going to do a manual failover just to make sure that, you know, um, just to show you. So it's readable now, right? So it's done. So let's go here. Hmm, this is still running. I'm OK, good. So it's done, set up. Now I'm doing a failover. And if we come here, we should see that the roles are going to change, right? Um, you see, and now it's pending. It's failing over. And you know, it should be done within a few seconds. Uh, you know, it says fail back for next demo, so I don't know if I need that. And the last thing I have to show you is a is an auto failover group. So, as if are you doing good on the time or? Uh, yeah, uh, I have one question here actually. I just yes. stop, uh, yeah sure. because uh, you have showed like uh, you know how the data is being replicated in different region. So is it going to be only read only or it's read write? You know the I means like no. we can query. Yeah, it's it will be read only. You can fail over as soon as you fail over. It's going to take the role of the read write. Oh, OK. Yeah, okay. so for SQL Server, you have one copy. Uh, I know there are some other solutions that uh, in cloud you have that you have multi writes and then they reconcile. Um, and you, know, you have to have your rules, you know, who wins and who loses and all that in case of a conflict, uh, but that's not the case here. Okay. So as you can see, now the central US got the primary role and the East US is a readable, right? OK. Yep. Sure. OK, and one more thing. What's the consistency level of the data? I means like how much time it takes to, you know, the replicate the data uh, I means like and how much the data is consistent? Uh, yeah, you know. so you it's always transactionally consistent. That's guaranteed, right? Okay. You cannot um, it will never have a, um, you know, and, and th th that's the guarantee of the, of the of the SQL Server in general, right? That doesn't change uh, whether you go to cloud or you with on premise, right? And I don't want to start talking about the full asset property here, right? Uh, yeah. Because you know, then we go to a different direction. Uh, but you are always guaranteed to, you know, you're transactionally consistent. Uh, that's for sure. Um, but how far behind you are, uh, that depends, right? So that's why uh, you probably want to put some monitoring, and you want to get some warning, right? If you, you know, fall behind that. Uh, and there are uh, metrics they call um, that uh, you can, um, you know, I have a totally separate talk. Uh, that you can constantly send to log analytics workspace, right? Some cool to query language, uh, and you can constantly query that. And if you say, okay, if this value is, you know, uh, greater than uh, X, uh, send me alert, right? Yeah. Okay. And I also, uh, in my slide, there was a cartoon on the left side. If you remember, uh, there is a, a store proc uh, that you can call and you can bundle it with your transactions if you really want to make sure. That if you before the caller get the acknowledgement, you want to make sure that it went to the secondary. Uh, you can do that too, but you have to be just careful that uh, in that case, um, you know your uh, you know your, your, your round trip time will be longer. Okay, sure. Thanks. You're welcome. So I'm just going to fail back. I think there's some dependency on the um, you know on the. Uh, on the next demo. Uh, one thing I want to um, talk about the failover group uh, is once you create a failover group, there's really no database. So you first use the, you know, you create the failover group and then you can choose, you know, what databases that you want to add to that failover group. The advantage here is I can fail over all of this at the same time together. I do not have to do this one by one. So here I'm just creating a failover group and I do not have any database. So now if I go to the here, I go to the server failover group. Now I have a failover group name, right? 
but look at the database count. I do not have any database here. Uh, so let's go back there. OK, I already created that, so this was there from before. Uh, yeah, I should have cleaned that, but if I delete and do that, it's going to same thing. Now I'm saying I'm adding a database to the failover group that was created above, right? So let's add this database. Failover group, I mean. OK, I thought I failed over. OK. It's, Is two S two is a primary? Oh, what's the problem now? Yep, there's no database. OK, I'm just going to add it from here. Save. Right. Uh, so once I add this. OK, let me go back here. Just going to delete the failover group totally. And clear the failover group. OK, it's there. Great. I'm not sure what I did wrong there, so I definitely didn't do a good cleanup today before this. So once you create a failover group, um, I want to show you that you automatically get um, two endpoints. And you can take those. And uh, you know you can put those as, as your connection string for read write and uh, and read only traffic. And in case if they flip flop or if they change fail over, you really do not have to do anything. So now we have a database. And these are the endpoints that I was talking about right. Here. And we can copy this. Um, we can just, uh, you know, open this as a SQL server, SQL login, and connect. So I don't have a server name here, right? I just have the failover group name here, right? And if I now say new query, Server name. Uh, you get the server name here, right? So in your connection string, there is no concept of server name. Uh, you just put the failover group name, and it does work. So uh, let's go back here, uh, and and you can you can do the same. So you know if someone is interested, you know you take this, connect to it, you know look at the server name, you will see the secondary server name. Uh, so you can do a failover. If we want to. And as you see here, primary is in East US and secondary is in Central. Um, we can do a failover from here. I initiated one. So if we refresh it, 
um, you will see that you know uh, the roles are going to change. As you can see now, the primary is in central, secondary is in East US, right? Um, I'm not going to fail back. I just want to show that the the read is scale out, and that's the last thing we have. As I said, that with certain tier, once you create the server, you automatically get a uh, read-only copy, right? You do not have to do anything. So if you go to at the top here during my setup, I created a Azure SQL Server for read scale demo, and here, as you see, I created this, um, you know, uh, with a with, with a general purpose. No, that's probably yeah, the business critical one. And I gave it a name as a, you know, for my read scale, right? So I'm just going to show that quickly. So this is the server. Now, Here, if I do not mention anything, and I run this, as you see, it says read write, right? But the same connection, If I just point this um, and then if we run this uh, cancel, if you run the same uh, query, um, you will see that it will tell you that it's a it's a read only. Um, so you know this one you need to manage your connection strings, um, and you know you're not probably going to use this unless you have you know big read workload, right? So if you're running, uh, you know, you, if you're trying to use the same database for two kind of workload and uh, you want to take advantage of it because it's there for you, um, um, it's, it's it's a great way to, you know, take advantage because you're not paying anything extra for that. Uh, so that's pretty much I think I have for demo and, you know, this is just to clean up. Uh, so let me go at the bottom. Yeah. And um, you know, if you want to check, right? You know, um, this is another piece of code. If you're not sure, you know what uh, tier I deployed my Azure SQL database, and uh, is my uh, read, um, you know, is this database read enabled or no? Uh, this is a piece of code that I put up so you can check, right? And I also have notes here that you know it's only premium and business critical is automatically enabled. The other three uh, is not included into the feature, right? Um, so let me go back to the to the slides for a minute and I'll be done in a minute or two. Uh, so again, uh, you know, as I said, you know, feedback is important to the organization, so please um, take a minute or two um, and you know, if something you didn't like, something we can improve, uh, let us know. Uh, these are some of the resources. All of these are URLs. Uh, so if you click on this, it's going to take you to a different uh, documentation page, um, which has more details. Uh, I mean, I use this uh, in preparation for this talk, and uh, these things keep changing, I can tell you that. Uh, so you need to visit often. Uh, again, I want to come back to my contact. If you need anything, uh, question, comments, uh, please uh, you know, send it my way. Uh, again, I want to thank you for listening to me. Thanks to the organizers. Um, so I'll, I'll hang out here because I think this is a break time. So um, if anyone has questions, want to chat about anything, uh, I think this will be a good time.
thank you so much sir uh, really nice session and i really like it because a thing uh, really make me more interesting is like the replication which i used to do in the cosmos and i think uh, somehow this is a new feature i am looking in the sequel as your sequel because i was not aware on that uh, okay uh, hi guys if you have any questions so please uh, use the raise hand feature and uh, you can ask and if you I mean like yeah and you can also provide the feedback uh, regarding the session yeah we will be uh, taking a short break after this session uh, like 15 20 minutes uh, and then we'll come back again 1:30 so yeah if you have anything you can raise your hand and can ask can unmute you and can ask uh tab is uh, is aro here again uh, i just want to thank you and it was a very interesting uh, topics you shared with us and uh, we as a data uh, a community we learn a lot thing about uh, from other speakers so uh, we have a lot of sessions in morning uh, uh, from different people so we learned a lot of good things so this one is a, another very interesting sh session which we can learn and do implement in our organization thanks a lot for sharing it oh no problem it was, you know it's an honor that you know you guys uh, invited me um, um and again like i said for other uh, group leaders um you know just reach out to me if i can help in any way um uh, you know i have a lot of connections uh, in my personal life for that area as i said uh you know so it'll be nice yeah thanks yeah so i'll be sharing my screen so maybe uh yeah uh, just a minute so hey guys uh, please help to provide uh, feedback because uh, that's important and for us and uh, for the speaker as well so they can improve and our uh, next speaker is uh, kiki he is from uh, indonesia and he is a microsoft data platform mvp and he is going to talk on the topic of uh, power bi so yeah it will start at 1:30 pm we are going to take a short break so in middle if you have any questions uh, regarding previous session so please you can unmute yourself can ask or yeah even though you can reach us any one of them out like me ro or po or maybe even tayeb he is also on twitter and linkedin so yeah maybe uh yeah anything uh thanks again sir a uh, really nice session uh, we will uh, uh, if we have anything uh, we will surely uh, try to contact you on that thank uh, you thank you i'll just stay on mute for a few more minutes sure. in case and then i'll log off thanks sure. thank you